So folks, what I thought we could do for the last um, 15 minutes to maybe half an hour, we'll see how it goes, is just open up things for discussion a bit more. And uh, I'd written down a few things as we're going through the day. And I think we've had a, a really good overview of some of the challenges through Ken and uh, you know, government um, regulations and so on, and how some of this technology can go awry if you're not, you're not careful, unanticipated, unanticipated um, and, and welcome consequences sometimes. Um, and, and, you know, the, the things to sort of look at in the future that sort of, you know, this is not going to solve everything for everybody. Uh, so that's a, an important thing. And then, you know, we spoke about machine learning and you know, that's uh, starting to play into, into what we do um, and, and, and so on. Um, and then throughout the day we started to talk again, you know, about uh, technologies and application in medicine, distant, distance medicine, distance treatment and so on. Brian Basiri gave us a great talk on a practical application of technology in, in the use of farming and so on. And then Lilo, of course, an extension of that. And then a great talk from Pascal as well, sort of setting the, the tone for um, energy and, and the use of energy grids and how that's finding a home here in Africa. So I guess there's a couple of things that I'd like to sort of open up for discussion. I think one thing we're starting to see a pattern of is that this uh, technology is really in search of a home and it, the home is in the rest of Africa, not always necessarily here, but that doesn't count South Africa out because still if we talk about what Dr. Angelo does, a lot of that's happening in South Africa. So that's one interesting thing we could talk you know, a bit more about. But I wanted to sort of open up the panel discussion to the panel and then uh, you know, as we go, if we've got questions on those points, then just throw them out there. So to the panel, from the sort of things we've discussed today and you know, I'm sure you've had some thoughts and heard each other talk, is there any sort of one, if it's possible to pinpoint a technology um, or a group of technologies working together and it may be all of them, but you know, if we were to choose one or a group of those, where do you see sort of the the big difference being made? Yeah, you know, not just so much only in South Africa, but the rest of the world. But the rest of Africa, mm -hmm. let's bring it down to more manageable size. So, is there one? I think. I think. Um, to be honest with you, I think it's a multitude. But I think the the main thing is to focus on using available natural resources. Okay. I think it's harnessing the power of nature okay. um, and using innovation to use that, that power to step change technology advancements. So I think it's looking at what's around you um, and using that to the best of your abilities. Sure, so sustainable resources, which exactly. obviously you need to have, um, rather than denuding the environment as we've seen in some countries where you've had a famine as a result of that, is to exactly. try and avoid that and get to a situation where these things are sustainable, um, and, and then I think you know. Also, in light of that, are, are sort of what are the things that are affordable can be used is another thing that came through. You know, until these things get going to some sort of scale, would be another element. Um, any of you other gentlemen have a comment on on that on what sort of use? I think the energy sector is quite amazing to see some of the presentations, and if you've got a cell phone to charge, if you've got energy to charge a cell phone, you can then access farming applications, you can then access health. So if you're putting it all together, energy seems quite quite critical. And, and that together with good and responsible leadership, all the stakeholders around the table, I think can probably make the biggest difference uh, in the continent and in South Africa. So uh, very, very true. Um, would it be fair to say that there's a sort of a tipping point that as these different sort of ecosystems grow, they'll become cheaper, more affordable, better, and will continue to flourish? Um, Pascal, I saw you nodding. Is that something you would agree with? or Thank you. Yeah, so I think what I was done today is to actually see the way these technologies that are ready are being deployed in very different fashion for addressing different problems, but they can actually grow into something which will be rather unique. And so I think that's what I was very impressed. So you, can, you have actual problems right now that we need to solve. But then if you solve them, then you, it's a stepping stone, as you were saying before, to, to actually doing something larger. And I like that very much because the technology is ready to be applied mm -hmm. and it's leapfrogging you know, some, some steps that were not taken so far. But then when you do that, you basically you know, enable other technologies to be applied and you can grow organically. And I think that's what I got as a main message today. So no, I think that's very encouraging. No, I think so too. And it really is exciting for me. And you know, sort of, I know I heard some mutters before, before the break at, uh, for lunch, what about Africa, what about Africa? Well, now I think we've turned the corner and we're seeing much more about it, what I was talking about earlier. And this is really technology that's really finding a home in Africa. You know, 
and uh, leapfrogging, as you say. So, I mean, if you look at the kinds of things that are important to Africa, it's food, education, medicine, um, access to water. So a lot of those are represented here amongst what we've spoken about. And, they, you know, as time goes by, hopefully there'll be, you know, more of that. Um, and I, I think it also requires at least, you know, perhaps if we talk about energy grids, I don't know if you um, agree, there's a stepping stone to people being able to get there, you know, through the kinds of mm. technologies, very low level, mm. of, you know, one person. But I think, uh, you know, I would also pose the question, uh, what would, uh, what's the role of government in all of this? Because would there be a sort of a push and a pull where the government perhaps can invest in some of these kinds of technologies for, for helping people, either through education or making money available to certain areas to build their own energy grids or, you know, build smart clinics or virtual clinics, you know, that sort of thing? I think, I think government needs to create uh, an enabling environment. Um, if I look at South Africa as an example, recently the Department of Energy made a pronouncement that would allow all companies to be able to generate their own power up to 10 megawatts, right? So what that does is that this opens up the market for companies to invest in their own power generation without having to seek a deviation from the Minister, uh, Minister of Energy. Mm. So I think the government needs to create and deregulate more to allow innovation to step change and leapfrog, as Pascal was referring and to. And perhaps to create the stepping stone to helping exactly. people start their own companies. Exactly. And grow those, and they become exactly. self-sufficient in that way. Yeah. Sustainable from that point of view, perhaps, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. So I think government has a critical role, but it's also up to us to get involved. And the public-private partnerships to work together is very important, together with a common goal. And we can see from some of the presentations today, we've actually got contextual intelligence. You know, we in our country, we in our continent, there's some wonderful stories that we actually have solutions ourselves. And using that together with the technology from ourselves or from overseas, we can harness it in the correct way with good leadership across government side mm. and uh, sort of citizens and uh, the public-private sector per se working together. And maybe government can, can do their part in, in lowering the resistance so the barriers to entry can be lowered in, in some way to make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. Manoj? Yeah, I think... We, we've always got to, the one thing that gets me is that we, we always place too much of emphasis on government. And I always say, so what are we doing to enable something to happen? Um, having clean drinking water, access to health care, that's for our fellow citizens. It's our neighbors, it's the people that we interact with all the time. And asking government to solve some of these biggest problems by themselves is not going to happen. If we look through the history of time, it's never happened. And I don't think we can leverage them right now to think that it will happen. But this is one, and I think if we take the business lens on it, we've seen a massive uptick for business when they, they truly work in partnership. Whether it's horizontal or vertical integration, extending that same model to include government. And I think sometimes we also forget the power of civil society to keep that watchdog eye to be able to hold us to account for all of this. And I think that ecosystem thinking to solve some of these massive problems is not gonna be a government solution, it's not gonna be a private, it's gonna be a, a collective. And I think if there's one thing that we know on the African continent is how to work together. We know we, we are resilient, I think we, we can all agree on that. And I think it's all of us saying, listen, how do we solve a single problem first? And it's gotta start small. I think sometimes we're asking for many of these issues to be solved that, have been, that are massive. We don't see and understand the scale of those problems. You know, if, if, we, if I just think back to, to, to today specifically, and, I'll, and I'm, I'm going to maintain this, is how do we leverage technology to solve a need? Not create a new market by solving a need. The money for corporates will come after that. We've seen that with all the big companies. They don't go out with the aim of saying, how much money am I going to make? They say, what value can I deliver? And then the money will follow. And I think it's a slight different mindset that we need to have. And Lou, we've, we've really entered into a space where none of us can say we've been there, done that. All we can say is if we look back, what have we learned so we don't make those mistakes again? And I think that's where we're sometimes losing it as well, is we make the same mistakes, label it differently, and, and say we tried when we haven't. The big five problems in the South African context of education, infrastructure, crime, uh, healthcare and education have always been there. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed in probably the last 20, 25, 30 years, 35 years. So how are we going to really start pulling around this? We've seen, if I talk about crime specifically, we've seen the rise of private security companies 
You know, that's, that's a sector. But how do we start working together? If there's one person that I, again, I'm going to profess that I, because I'm on Twitter all of a sudden, but if I look at Yusuf Abramji as someone who's really saying, listen, how do we enable using of technology to also let the government, the pri public sector, and the private sector start working together? And I think you need that catalyst. And my question is, who's that cat catalyst going to be? And it's easy for me to sit here and say, is it going to be, who's it going to be? But someone has to take the step. And it's an individual thing. And, and, and we've all got to do it. I think waiting for someone to kick this off is not going to happen. We're always going to wait for the next person. Yeah. Very good. Pascal, you wanted to say something on yeah, that. Yeah, so I, I, think, I think what I've, I found very interesting today is, is the fact that if you, if you want to succeed in, in, in some of these very big challenges, you have to take small steps and, and build on them. And what I was very impressed, and when I did my homework <laughs> before preparing the talk, you can see solutions, but they're also adapted to the local environment, and the business model is adapted. And I think that's going to that's gonna have a significant impact, because once again, that's gonna, you build some success, and then the, the, the following success are going to come. So I think the key point is you have to adapt the business models to the need of the people, and that's what this pay-as-you-go you know, model is doing. But then you can see that these people now, they have electricity, they, the children can read, and they, you know, they, they couldn't read in the evening. And mm. It's going to make a big difference for everything, mm. uh, cumulatively. And I think you know, people are going to trust the environment more, they are going to invest more. And so I think that's what I like. Mm -hmm. The fact that we have to find this business model that makes sense for the various communities. And it seems that people are thinking that way, which I find very interesting. Yeah. And I completely agree with the idea of... Uh, the government's facilitating some of this initiative from the industry. So they have to get out of the way, and at the same time they have to make sure that people are doing the right things. Yeah. But, but I think that's a very good, so, very so good comment. Uh, very good answer. So essentially there's a role for government to play in making exactly. helping getting these things started. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it, I agree, it has to be a partnership, but the partnership here is enabling, yes. enabling people to invent new business model mm -hmm. and then and, and regulating, you know, such that people don't do, you know. Do silly things. Yeah, yes. exactly. exactly. Brian? Yeah, so uh, definitely even for me, I totally agree on the fact that the government has to be also adaptive because um, uh, one of the things that, of course, we discussed is the fact that technology is exponentially rising and sometimes regulation is always following behind. And the government has to realize that actually there has to be enough room for us to experiment to actually see and develop working solutions that actually uh, solve local needs. But at the same time, they also have to adapt fast enough so that they don't overregulate a sector at a very young stage. So that actually we have enough room to experiment and pilot and have working uh, examples before then we can figure out how do we put in place the best regulations that are going to enable these innovations to scale. I think that that is the, the, one of the biggest challenges that government have to really yeah. figure out. How do they develop regulations that are adaptive as technology changes?